So I've never been invited on mainstream media or Fox News, but if I did, I always acknowledge that, yes, I would accept that invitation so long as I wouldn't have to leave home to do the interview. Like if they invited me to come on their program and do it via Skype, I'm cool with that. Uh, but I always imagine that I'd go on and I'd go 100% rogue. There's like an 80% chance I'd go full rogue and I'd just take over the segment and say what I want to say. I'd call out the network for propaganda and the harm that they're doing to the country and the planet. Uh, but two people actually kind of did what I've been wanting to do for a long time on two different networks. So this week we had Newsmax and Fox News called out for the big lie that they spread about the 2020 election. So the first is from Newsmax. That's the first clip that we're going to play. So former Obama speechwriter David Litt goes on the program seemingly to talk about Elon Musk's SNL performance, which nobody should care about. And um, he then took that segment in an entirely different direction, and it was glorious to watch. And uh, you can see how uncomfortable the Newsmax host was. What do you think of Elon Musk's performance? This is the first time since 2015 we've had a non-athlete, non-entertainer on the show, the last person to do that and do well with great ratings, our former president, Donald Trump. Well, Rob, it's a great question. I mean, what happened on SNL this weekend was that people made stuff up and then said it on television like it's true. And that actually happens pretty frequently in American TV. For example, in 2020, Dominion Voting System sued Newsmax over its false claims about election fraud. Newsmax was lying to its own viewers and Newsmax had to settle that lawsuit. So um, actually, I just need to check in. Are you still telling that lie or are you telling new lies? Wait, are we talking about, I'm sorry, David, are we talking about, do you want to talk about something completely non-related and try to catch me on a Monday morning totally off topic or do you want to talk about Elon Musk? Well, I can see why you don't want to talk about Dominion voting systems, because if you do, Newsmax could get sued and lose billions of dollars because these are lies. David, David, what David, David, that, that's, listen, I, David, uh, that's, that's fine, David. I know this is a very funny moment for you. I'm sure you didn't sleep last night as you prepared to sort of try and get the morning anchor on Newsmax. I'd be happy to talk with you about whatever you want to talk about. Obviously, it's not the topic that we have set up for right now. So if you'd like to talk about Saturday Night Live, I will do that with you. But obviously, I'm not going to talk about anything else right now. So you decide right now in this moment on live television. Go ahead. Did Dominion voting systems have any impact on the 2020 election? Oh, that's unfortunate because I was really excited about this interview. I didn't watch SNL on Saturday night, but I thought Elon Musk did an OK job. And he also said that he's got Asperger's. So I thought that was a uh, fascinating component of the monologue. So, David, we look forward to having him back on very soon again. That was a stellar interview. David Litt, thanks so much for joining us. We'll be right back. Oh, that was so awkward. <laughs> and I love that he doubled down there and said, well, I can see why you don't want to talk about the Dominion voting systems, because if you do, Newsmax could get sued and lose billions of dollars because these are lies. I mean, how awesome is that? That is that is incredible. Brilliant work to David Litt. I mean, I don't usually give anyone from the Obama administration credit because I assume that anyone who worked for Obama is a bad person, and I work backwards from that conclusion until they prove otherwise, but I mean, certainly he deserves credit for that, credit where it's due. That was phenomenal, and that's what they need to hear. They need someone to infiltrate their network and call them out on air for spreading lies and misinformation about our democracy, which we all have a vested interest in protecting. Now, the second clip is from Fox News, where the American Federation of Teachers president, Randy Weingarten, she went on and she also called out Fox News for spreading the big lie. And she was brought on for a segment about how critical race theory is being taught in classrooms in America. And apparently that's really bad and we should be fearful of this. But she called out Fox News for their spreading of misinformation. Big believer in celebrating diversity and actually, and actually looking at and helping look at people's lived experience. But if you're really talking about misinformation now, Martha, and I hope you are, I really would hope that Fox would really look at what happened in this election and how we can, because every social studies teacher is wrestling with this, discern yeah. fact from fiction. We have to do that so as social studies Yeah, we, we have, uh, well, we have a president, President Biden, uh, was elected in 2020. I, I think that all of that is, is quite clear. Um, so I, I'm not sure why you, you know, are so concerned with, with that part with that particular moment in history. Every election is significant. Nobody is hiding anything under any rocks here. But I but I do want to, you know, the fact that you have. That was phenomenal. 
credit where it's due. Look, no news outlet or even a podcast that spread this lie should ever be able to live this down. It was one of the most brazen lies and one of the most harmful things to ever be said about American democracy. That lie, I think, it did irreparable harm to this country, not just to unity, but to democracy itself, and that has to be called out. Now, I think that this goes without saying. Anyone who knows my work, who watched me particularly during the 2020 Democratic Party primaries, knows how disappointed I was with Elizabeth Warren. And Randy Weingarten helped Elizabeth Warren smear the base of the only progressive candidate who actually had a chance of winning. So, you know, it kind of feels a little bit dirty to give these folks credit, an Obama administration official and an Elizabeth Warren supporter who was very prominent in her campaign as a spokesperson, credit for anything when they in no way contribute to further progressing of American society. Like these people, uh, I can't stand them to be honest, but I have to give them credit where it's due. I believe in positive reinforcement and if they actually want to turn things around and help progress the country further, then I think that part of that process requires us to condemn people and discredit and delegitimize folks who spread very dangerous and harmful lies about American democracy. And I'll leave that there. These segments were phenomenal. I want to see more of this. I want to see more people go on Fox News and Newsmax and call them out for their lies and misinformation to their face. And what I really want to see is somebody go on Tucker Carlson and do just that. You might not be invited back on Tucker Carlson's program ever again, but would you be a rock star? Would you be basically famous in leftist circles forever for doing something like that? Damn right, and rightfully so. So whoever gets invited on to Tucker Carlson next, call him out, and uh, I promise you, it will be uh, something that we all celebrate on the left.